And here we are again, Brimstone. And uh Yes. If only. And so we got all the equipment we need uh, to see to give you know have Sarah give us the time of day. So let's go see her again. And a new uh, screen, new uh, portrait of her. And you know I'm just gonna play dumb here. No, I've not heard of the books of these. East of the name of the in, uh, ancient country in Hysteria. Although, of note, which isn't brought up that often, uh, LPs I've seen, East is actually a, uh, actually real life fiction. It was supposedly an island off of uh, Brittany, uh, France. Uh, was kind of like the Celtic version of uh, Atlantis. Hmm. Uh, instead of floating up, you know, floating off into the sky, it sank into the ocean and had some Christian annotations. But all in all, it's pretty much, uh, yeah, the Atlantis story. And yes, we will truly do this for you, Sarah. And we get the I'm trusted pistol. Yes. It's a big responsibility. Yep. Yes, and remember, don't misuse the crystal. Remember what happened back in Moon Crystal. Oh. No, oh, rising of the dead, turning into a big bio monster. Can't have any of that. Oh, gosh. Ugh. Anyway. Now we have a new mission. Uh, we gotta go visit, uh... Sarah's Aunt Jeva back uh, over in Zeptic. Which means we get to fight and kill more monsters. And get to hear more of this good music. And we're killing blue monsters that look like uh, Slash from Chrono Trigger. Yeah, they kind of do. I never made that association before. Um... Anyway, um, while we're wandering around, um, let's talk about the music of this game. Uh, the person that actually did the, uh, legacy version of the music is named, uh, Yasuko Yamada. Um, hasn't done much outside of Japan that would be recognizable, although, uh, Yasuko is doing the soundtrack for, uh, Gayuken Kenji, uh, which in America would be uh, Miles Edgeworth, Ace Detective. Huh. Well, I guess this uh, this port is an uh, Atlas uh, production, so. Yeah, true. Very Actually, I don't know where I'm going with that, <laughs> so never mind. Uh, that's all right. Yep, yeah, that's again. Yeah. It's. I mean, it's. For being a DS uh, game, the music's actually pretty good. I mean, it's not the best E soundtrack, but it's certainly not the worst. Well, you know, even a bad E soundtrack is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I th I think the definite E soundtrack though is the one that was uh. Re you know, it was redone by, uh, was it Ryu Yom Yomi Mitsu? Yeah. Oh, there is a PSP version of this game. Oh, there's the Red Wolves. Not quite as spazzy as, uh, the ones I dealt with. Yep. And, uh, I'm gonna, uh, break off a little here. Uh, Zeptic is actually to our right, but, uh, I wanted to show you something, because this is actually one of the... Oh. And that's a picker, by the way. They're just so cute! I'm almost afraid to kill them, but, you know, unfortunately they're attacking me. They're like rabid wild pickers. Yeah. Anyway, as, as I was saying, uh, the PSP version of this game actually got a uh, redone uh, soundtrack much in the same vein as Oath and Felgana, so it, it 
rocks. I'll definitely have to check that out. Uh, actually, most likely I'll be playing a few tracks uh, from that game in here, just to... Because East is one thing known for its music, and it's amazing like how many so many remixes as this game has been done, especially the music, and it still sounds fresh and different every time you do it. I mean, Yuzo Kanshiro did an excellent job with this uh, soundtrack. Yeah, I mean, when, when your basic composition is that solid, then there are just a bunch of places that you can take it beyond that. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, you know... Peace is kind of like Doom. If there's a platform that can handle it at all, it'll be forwarded to it. True, very true. Anyway, what I'm actually looking for is the Roto Tree, which, uh, unlike the Turbo version, um, is pretty, pretty big plot significance and actually gets its own music. Uh, there it is. And it's huge. Well, isn't it supposed to be big? Yeah, but it uh, wasn't depicted as quite that big before. Yep. And a huge cool, a cool breeze seems to, uh, yeah. I can't read. It gets its own portrait graphic, too. Yep. Actually, Rhoda's music was present in the original version of East, which is the PC-88, I believe. Yeah, there were a couple of tracks that never got used in the uh, in the turbo version. Yeah, well, mostly because it was the transition between you know East One, East Two, you know the ending music. Uh, I think for one Sorry. of the games. Although there's one track in particular, it will come up when we do East Two that I was absolutely pissed off they never brought in uh, East Two Turbo Graphic 16. But th mm -hmm. that's that's a story. You know that is another story. To quote Ma Mako. You know. Now let me tell you of the days of high adventure. <laughs> and. It's like very little of these base enemies can do much to you at this point. No, pretty much I'm just grinding for fun and profit, mainly for profit and XP. We're getting close to, uh, Zeptic. As the science with the weird, uh, you know, numerical units of, uh, you know, measurement told us. the way you kind of explode from the feet whenever you level up. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, kind of do like a power up, you know, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z style or whatnot. <laughs> First or... boss fight, you'll stand there and yell at each other for uh, <laughs> 30 minutes. Uh, thankfully, that doesn't happen here. And here we are in Septic. Which... Also known as God's Waiting Room. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of old people here. And it's got some very, uh... Melancholy music, too. Equip that, and I'm gonna go ahead and save here. And this seems like a good place as any to stop, so... After we save, which... Finally figure out how to do it. <laughs> uh, so, until then... Uh, this has been Lord Brimstone. And this is, um... Uh, see you guys, uh, next time.